In this video, I'll be demonstrating the contactor and contactor feedback object available in machine builder libraries. The contactor and contactor feedback objects are used for controlling mechanical and solid state contactors. I have a demo application to explain the add-on instruction and its faceplate. The contactor and contactor feedback routine have respective add-on instructions. The digital channel routine consists of digital channel add-on instruction which is connected to the output and auxiliary feedback input of the contactor instructions. The simulation routine has code to simulate contactor auxiliary feedback. The contactor object is used for controlling contactor with no feedback. The contactor is commanded to open and close from user logic using command energize parameter. The reset command is to reset the add-on instruction error status. In this demo application, the output is connected to a digital channel. The status bits can be used in the user logic. The unpowered state parameter defines the contactor state whether open or close when the output is off. The configuration parameters can be set from HMI faceplate or logic. I'll open the contactor feedback routine. The contactor feedback object is used for contactor with auxiliary feedback. The config aux feedback is to set the feedback polarity as normally open or normally close. Config timeout is to set time for the timeout error for auxiliary feedback. In the HMI, I have navigation object for contactor and contactor feedback. These buttons are for the demo to energize command energize parameter. I'll open the contactor feedback faceplate. The home tab shows the contactor open close status and other status. In the settings tab, user can test the contactor using the test buttons. On pressing the test button, the contactor physical output is turned on. When released, the contactor output will be turned off. User can also force the contactor output using these force buttons. Once forced, the contactor will remain forced until it is released from the faceplate. The spanner icon on the navigation object indicates if the contactor output is forced. Both force and test does not impact the logical output of contactor. Thus, the contactor can be put back to user logic control once the force or test is removed. This ensures smooth transition between maintenance and production conditions. I'll remove the force condition now. The configuration tab consists of all the configuration parameters. The fault tab shows the fault code and description. The fault can be reset using the reset button. The help tab consists of basic help about the faceplate. To demonstrate the object, I'll open the settings tab so you can visualize all the status bits. I'll click the command button to energize the contactor. You can notice the contactor is now closed. I'll click the command button again to reset the command energize parameter. Now the contactor is open. To demonstrate the feedback fault, I'll turn off the simulation so no auxiliary feedback is received. I'll click the command button. The output is on, but since no feedback is received, the contactor status is still open. After timeout, the contactor has reported an error. The error description says, actuation timeout, failed to change state. I'll reset the command energize button now and reset the error. Once the fault is fixed, the contactor can be commanded again. In this section, I'll demonstrate how to instantiate contactor and contactor feedback object in application code manager. The ACM already has machine library registered. 
you need to download the libraries from Rockwell Automation product compatibility and download center page. I have already created a project, added a controller and display. I also have added a program in which we will instantiate contactor implement objects. For the input and output connection, I have added digital channel objects. To add contactor, right click on the program and click add new. In the filter, enter contactor. Select the contactor implement object and click next. I'll enter the object name as K100. The routine and tag name are derived from the object name. You can modify or leave it as it is. This is the unpowered state configuration. I will leave it as normally opened. In the I.O. connection, you can link the object to digital channel, digital output module, or you can enter a tag name which can be created later in the logics designer or leave empty if no connection is to be assigned. For this demo, I'll select the digital channel that I have already added in the project. Select the browse button. I'll select the DCH contactor output digital channel and select the input data reference. Click finish. Select the object callout selection as default or detailed. I'll select detailed. Select the display where the navigation object is to be placed. Click next. In the link library, click auto create to create the link libraries. Click finish to complete the instantiation. Next, I'll show how to add contactor feedback object. Select the contactor feedback implement object and click next. I'll name the object as K101. Select the auxiliary feedback configuration as normally open or normally closed. I'll leave it as normally open. Select the activation time for the auxiliary feedback watchdog fault. Select the unpowered state as normally open or normally closed. I'll leave it as normally open. Select the I.O. connection for output energized. I'll select the digital channel DCH contactor feedback output and input data reference. Select the connection for auxiliary feedback input. I'll select the DCH aux feedback digital channel and out data reference. Select the object callout selection. Display for navigation object. Auto create the link libraries. Click finish to complete the instantiation. Now we have added contactor and contactor feedback objects. To understand further about generating the code and display, watch the basics of ACM workflow video series. For more information, download Machine Builder libraries from Rockwell Automation website. Thanks for watching the video.